There we are. Hello guys, Nika here with your daily Neuro Nugget. Before we get started, know that this is for entertainment purposes only. This is speculation. And just because I'm talking about potential suspects, in my opinion, does not mean that you are allowed to go and harass these people. At the end of the day, this is speculation. You can do with this information what you want, but don't go and harass people just because. So now that we have that cleared out, I am highly caffeinated. I am going to talk very fast. My time is very short today. So we're gonna get right into it because let's be honest here. The two Davids, the two Sigma frat men, because they are grown adult men, do not have a good record. And when I delved more into these two Davids, there could be a potential motive on why they would unalive these four people. So just to catch you up, I'm sure you guys have already heard about these guys here, but these Sigma men started thinking about it. Okay, is it possible that the other two samples of DNA from two other males, is it possible that they are the DNA of these two Davids? And is it possible that these two Davids were the two men that may have been seen in vehicle number two? Do you guys remember that in the affidavit? There was a suspect vehicle number two and that was like never talked about anymore. So is it possible? You let me know. Also, motive, okay. Ethan knew potentially about their frat brother. Do you guys remember the other young man who was supposedly drowned in a few feet of water? Who was supposedly a very good swimmer? Well, guess who else was allegedly present when that took place? The two Davids. Now, I'm trying to think here. Okay, you cannot base or maybe you can, if a person is good or bad on one incident. But if the two Davids were actually present when their frat brother drowned in a few feet of water, why didn't they call the police? Or did they, or did they wait until it was too late? I want to know what happened there. Because to me, if a young man is a good swimmer, Why did he drown in a few feet of water? Is it possible that he was intoxicated? Yes, but even then, is it possible that it was related to the hazing within the Sigma fraternity? Because we know that fraternities in general have a bad track record. I don't care what you say. I've talked about this before. I was in several universities. I'm well versed on the sorority fraternity life. Hazing takes place. So, two Davids present there, okay? In my opinion, that gives you some background on them. Not to mention, allegedly, Ethan and Zena were at a frat party, okay? And in this party, a fight took place that involved the Davids. So. David L. is tall, bulky, good wrestler. And David B. is his, we'll say his sidekick, because allegedly he never leaves the side of David L. So I'm going to, for the sake of argument, say that David L. is the alpha and David B. is the follower. When I go back and think about the horrible crime committed, I think it is extremely likely that more than one person was involved. And for more than one person to be involved, most criminal books, forensic books will tell you that there's an alpha and then there's followers. Otherwise, the plan often collapses and it cannot be carried through. 
So I'm thinking, okay, here we have a case of an alpha and a beta follower. Is it possible that they were involved? What happened in this fight that could have peeved the alpha off? Allegedly, Ethan said something along the lines of David L. having small shriveled testes, allegedly due to his steroid use. This is what I found online saying something along these lines. Roids shriveled up your balls, so now you want to fight with the girls. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a male alpha running a fraternity. I think that would just piss me off. And we know that a lot of people who abuse steroids do have anger issues. So is it possible that this pissed David L. so much that he just lost his mind and said, you know what, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take care of these people. We're gonna take care of Ethan and Zaina because they hurt my ego. I think it's possible, especially if he was embarrassed in front of everybody else, like, the whole fraternity being there, it's a massive party potentially, and somebody just has the courage, in this case, Ethan, to call you out on your BS because you're potentially being creepy or potentially harassing the girls or potentially trying to pick a fight with the girls. So is it possible that DL just lost his mind and the beta followed with the plan? let me know down in the comments below. Not only that, but allegedly, Maddie had also peeved off DL, also in front of a party. There are rumors saying there was a party on a Friday night where something similar occurred. And Maddie called DL out in front of everybody because she was done with being harassed by DL. And Maddie finally snapped, said something, something embarrassing. And allegedly DL said, this is the last time that you embarrass me or say something stupid like that ever again. It is my opinion that that could be taken as a threat because if somebody tells me that to my face after harassing me and me putting a stop to it, with maybe a disparaging comment and they tell me that, I'm going to take that as a threat. So, I just think we have to look at everybody, including the two DLs. Why? Because motive is there in my opinion. Why? Because if it's true, the DL was on steroids abusing them. And if the rumors are true that he had been talking about it for weeks, can you imagine talking about that for weeks amongst other students? Maybe frat members? saying, this is what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna wear, we're gonna dress all in black, this is how we're gonna access the house. They had access to the house before. In several videos, you see at least one of the Davids within the house, inside the house. I think he knew the house well, I think he knew the victims well. There's also something else that has bothered me. The fact that Ethan's cuts, wounds were redacted. Rumors say that it's because his manhood was cut off. And if that rumor is true, it kind of does fit the story, right? Because if DL's manhood was symbolically stripped from him 
because he got called out in front of a whole party by Ethan saying that he had shriveled man parts. I could see somebody just going full rage and saying, you know what, this is what you get. So if that rumor is true, when and if that information finally comes out and we find out that Ethan was mutilated, his manhood was mutilated, what do we have? Now we have even more questions because now we have a narrative that doesn't fit the current narrative. What is the current narrative? A lonesome incel stalker who unalived four people who had no history of violent crime, who was a PhD student. By the way, by the way, do you know how much time when I got my master's in psych, how much time that eats away from your day? I can't imagine a PhD. So that's the current narrative. Incel, unalives, four people, leaves no trace. And if we find out that Ethan's manhood was mutilated, now we have a different narrative. Now we have to question, why would somebody do that? What kind of person would do that? In my opinion, a person who's just trying to get revenge, who has supposedly been stalking one or more of the females, wouldn't do such a thing. It is not necessary. Because people are currently speculating that Ethan was just happened to be there and it was, he wasn't part of the plan. He just happened to be there. But again, if the rumors are true of his manhood being mutilated, then we get a whole other story, potentially, which fits a lot of the rumors. By the way, a lot of these rumors are said to have started online, but when the crimes, the four students, when that first took place, a lot of people from Moscow were saying those were the rumors locally. And so far, we have found out that a lot of the rumors in the beginning were true. For example, the whole drug involvement with all the family members, one of many rumors that have been confirmed. So here we have two potentially angry frat men, an alpha and a beta, who had motive, who had just had a huge fight and the fight was witnessed by all the frat members. Not only that, but then the fraternity goes and just deletes all of their posts online. Why? The only reason I could think of deleting all the posts online, all your text messages, from these two DLs is if you have something to hide. So in my opinion, these two Davids are hiding something. You let me know in the comments below if you think there's enough reason or motive that these two Davids were involved and we're not even gonna go into the power that the family of one of these Davids holds. But I'm gonna go change, eat, drink some water. <sighs> Stay hydrated, friends. By the way, 
I love talking to you guys. My time is snug. I will try to reply to as many of you as I can. So take care and have a good night.